Can you teach her what was sitting down? It's basically like driving a car. Let's imagine since we're in Tennessee <laughs> that you see a deer and you like. Whoa, whoa. Yeah. Joy Denver Spears, welcome to the Big Idea Podcast. Thanks for uh, having me. Yeah, it's incredible to have you here. You want to see me dance. I do. I see. And, and Joy, we'll, we'll get into your story and things like that, but you're obviously a professional dancer. Uh, you, I don't know, you do this for a living at a very, very high level. Uh, how do you help people like me who, I have rhythm. I have rhythm. I was a, I was a fighter and you got to have rhythm to box flat out. Right. Um, but, I mean, I just bob my head a little bit. I don't want to bob my head with, with it in front of this thing, but you know what I'm saying? I'm just bobbing my head. And that's pretty much all I do in a, when I go into a club or I'm, I'm a little old for clubs now, but whenever I'm out in, you know, in public and there's music, I'm, I bob my head a little bit. Nothing more than that. What, what, what would you say to someone like me? Honestly, that's all I do when I go out. Mm. <laughs> and my friends are always like, oh, why don't you dance? You're a dancer. I'm like, I've been doing it all day. But <laughs> if, you can, if you have a steady beat with a bob of the head. My friends dance when, when we're out. And I don't know if it's, I don't know, that they, they look kind of cool. I don't, I don't look so cool doing it, but they look cool. You can learn the signature moves, like the dab and the woe and all that stuff. Oh. Yep. What, what is a woe? Can you teach a woe sitting down? Yep. You just, it's like what you don't do in the car, but it's basically like driving a car. If you're going to like, let's, let's imagine since we're in Tennessee <laughs> that you see a deer and you like, Swerve to the left. Whoa. Yeah. Oh, that's why it's called whoa, whoa. Yeah. Just and kind of whoa. straighten the, yeah. <laughs> Apparently what the kids are doing these days. That is incredible. How long has the whoa been going on? I'd say probably like four or five months, probably longer. I don't keep up with the YouTube. I feel like I'm too old to do a dab. I mean, some people could look cool doing it. I just can't imagine me being out in public and, and being serious. I mean, like... <laughs> I can't even do it. If you if you commit to it, you can do it. Oh my gosh. If you commit to it, you can do it. I believe it. I, I believe that. It's all about personality with it, right? If you own it, just like anything. If you own the dab, you can do the dab. If you don't own the dab, you look dumb doing the dab. You can do your own version of the dab. You uh, can make it like a <clears throat> little more swaggy dab. A swaggy dab. Mm -hmm. <laughs> swaggy dab. What was the thing called? What is the... It's called a d d dangle? Dungle. We were talking about earlier, JP. Dungle. Like, the, when, I, when I heard it, I'm like, what in the world? Who named that thing a the dungle? The dongle. Dongle. But even that name is hilarious. And it, Yeah, I know. I hate asking when I go to a studio. I'm like, does anyone have a dongle? I feel like I'm being inappropriate in front of my students. Right. So tell us about you, Joy. You know, I've known you for a few years. Not that well. We've hung out a few times. we got a bunch of mutual friends. But uh, I'm actually excited to get to know you today. So... Um, I am from, well, I was born in Birmingham and then we moved to Florence, Alabama when I was just turning one. Um, my dad came home and told my mom, he was an FBI agent and he was like, they just opened an office in Florence, Alabama. And she was like, oh, that's great. Are any of your buddies going to take the job? And he's like, oh, that's what I'm telling you because I took the job. And she was like, is there a Parisians there? Which that what Belk is now and that was my mom's first question <clears throat> which would contribute to my shopping issues oh. yep and so I thought she worked she, she, your mom did not work at Parisians no she I didn't okay. she just liked to shop there Got it. and <laughs> so we ended up moving to Florence actually killing Alabama and I started dancing when I was three and my first performance, I woke up at like 6 a.m. and walked in my parents' room in my green tutu and was like, I'm ready to dance. And they were like, you have like 12 hours. And I had my first performance, and I basically never wanted to leave the stage since then. Wow. Um, so I grew up dancing, did like competitive conventions and competitions. And um, then my senior year of high school, I was supposed to, I was enrolled to go to Alabama and I told my mom, I just wanted to do some auditions for an experience an audition for, so you think you can dance and then ended up making the show. Hmm. And when was that? That was in 2006. 2006. Okay. Yeah. And so, so I went, you were, you were 
10 I then? I was 18. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, I went to LA, filmed the show and then called my mom and said, I signed with an agent and I was going to stay in LA mm-hmm. and how'd that go? Uh, y- you know, we've grown from it. Um, <laughs> we've grown from it. but she being the smart lady she is was like, I'll let you move to LA if you start taking classes online. What she didn't tell me was that when I started my scholarship that you only had so long to use the scholarship. So oh. two years into it, I think I did like my first Britney Spears music video. Um, she was like, you know, you only have this long to finish your scholarship at school. I was like, you are way too smart. Nah. And so I, but it was the greatest thing I ever did. I went um, back and went to University of Alabama and I still traveled a lot. Um, and then... After I graduated, moved back to L.A. and toured with a lot of artists, worked on all the award shows, worked with, like, I mean, I kind of forget who all I've worked for, but all the pop artists. Lady Gaga was probably the last one I worked with in L.A. And I always knew I wanted to end up in Nashville and came here and started working as a choreographer. And I've been doing that now, working with a lot of the country artists and kind of getting a feel for directing too, but then I also teach at dance studios. So I basically just dance every day, but it's, um, I mean, it's my favorite thing to do and it's really cool because I feel like my worlds like have combined with friends and friendships I've had for a long time um, and friends that are artists, like getting to use their music when I teach in class at Millennium or wherever I'm teaching. And so it's kind of like combining all of that world of, entertainment and just artistry and stuff gotcha so like when when you were 18 and you uh made that show like what did that kind of do for your career like how, how did you you start going to auditions did you start uh I mean, obviously there's a respect factor if you make a show basically the day after the finale of it it was season two of so you think um I had an audition and I had to get it approved by Fox because it was with a choreographer that worked on the show Um, But it was Brian Friedman, and he was actually a mentor growing up um, that I would assist on convention. And it was for Swarovski Crystals, like an industrial. So I went the day after the finale and booked my first job and started working then. And then just kept auditioning and working, and it's just grown since then. Yeah. Um, What about artists, different artists that you've you've worked for? Like, what's the first, like, tour you went on? Um, I only toured with Latin artists. They really like the blonde All-Americans. Oh, yeah. Apparently. Um, but I did a lot of spot dates, like, with Lady Gaga, and then I was working with Pink, and then, um, did stuff with, like, Paula Abdul when she made a comeback, uh, Brittany when she was going through her phase because that's the only time she would hire a blonde white girl (laughs) um and then mainly like doing like award shows and stuff like billboards vmas all that stuff and then actually before i moved back to la after college was the first time that i did cmt awards with luke bryan and being rich and that's when i was like i'm going to end up back in nashville oh nice and now circling back around like i just did a cbs special for luke bryan choreographing it and i was like this is crazy how like 12 years later i'm here doing this when that was the first country artist that i danced for and i work with basically most all of the country artists now and it's super fun and they're all very nice and kind of nicer than all the other ones so oh nicer than the (laughs) other type of artists yep yeah, isn't that crazy? Like, you know, people from Nashville, uh, Chase Lauer was over here yesterday, and we're talking about... I love Chase. Yeah, I love Chase, too. He was He's, uh, you know, talking about the uh, collaboration in Nashville, mm-hmm. and there really is a different vibe amongst the... I mean, there's still... There, there's bad people everywhere, but, like, uh, overwhelmingly... It, it's overwhelmingly good when it comes to the people that you're dealing with in Nashville from right. experience. Yeah, no, it is, and that's... <laughs> Like, that's what I always tell people because I've had so many of my friends in L.A. And then, like, directors and choreographers that come here, they're like, you, you're killing it in Nashville. I'm like, it's just refreshing because 
you know, I do like the VMAs for a certain artist and then do another award show that they're there and they walk past you like you weren't in rehearsals with them for two weeks on like a nine hour day. Mm -hmm. And you're like, I just was on stage with you. And here it's like I go to CMT awards or CMA awards and, you know, like little big town or someone, they're like, oh my gosh, Joy, it's so good to see you. Or like Thomas Rhett and his wife and even manager, like the whole team, everyone's just so welcoming and real and just real I think that's the best word to use and it's just nice because everyone puts so much work in so you want to work with people that are good people yeah that appreciate your work yeah yeah it's interesting because uh you know Los Angeles is I mean I can do it in doses I actually actually I love going a couple times a year oh yeah totally for three or four days but it is interesting to me the difference in especially amongst like the actually the entertainment industry uh just actually in general the, the whole entertainment industry whether it be musicians uh actors actresses models whatever it is there is a difference there uh as far as who's cool who's not right uh, versus nashville i mean it's almost not cool in nashville in many ways to try to be cool <laughs> <laughs> that's that's what I when I'm teaching my students I'm like cool is overrated right. like it's for for me like <clears throat> I learned if you can make fun of yourself and just be the real you then that's like the best you I make fun of myself all the time I yeah. don't try to like paint myself as this really cool person at all because I think that's setting yourself up for failure right <laughs> but that's just my opinion yeah I think in the end too I mean how you treat people um, and you know, just yeah, really how you are to people makes a much bigger difference in how happy you are, how right. even how successful you are yep. than, you know, playing the cool game and, oh, he's not cool. So, and I, and I see that a lot. Uh, and, and you know, this is good for people that are kids that are learning to dance, like as they're working their way up through the ranks per se. I mean, there's it's really hard for them to know how to act and role models like you probably uh, can help them through that. Yes. Um, and that is one of the biggest things, like <clears throat> all the like flashy, cool things I do. People are like, Oh, you live this life. But I think the most fulfilling part of what I do is getting to teach and make an impact on these kids. You don't realize how much you're making an impact sometimes. And like being a role model is something that's very important to me because we can all look back when our parents would tell us things and you don't listen, but then the person that you idolize tells you something and your parents are like, I've been telling you that forever, but right. you listen to that person. Mm -hmm. And so for me, that's one of the coolest parts of what I do. Um, and also, yes, going back to how, like how you act as a person, I've learned this a lot, like choreographing and working on stuff. I want to work with people I like. If you're a brat, like, I don't care how good of a dancer you are. Like, I want to work with good people that are easy to work with and just get along with everyone. They're flexible with schedules and all that stuff. Yeah, what's it like uh, training or teaching uh, this generation coming up? When I was coaching, uh, I retired in 2012. I never gave up my style of coaching, which was pretty hardcore. Like right. I didn't, I didn't accept that. Uh, well, it's it's a it's a premise that it's a different generation and they can't take the heat. And because to me, like you know, at the highest level of professional fighting, you can either kick ass or you can't. Right. You can either take the heat or you can't. You know, if you can't, you're going to get knocked out. And I wasn't yeah. training people to get knocked out, but. What do you, what's it like training this generation? I don't even know what it is right now. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, thirty. I mean, what's that like? Um, so it is very different <clears throat> because I think back to when I was training and that was before, like I got my first cell phone in seventh grade mm -hmm. and I was like, what's the World Wide web doing on my cell phone? Like mm -hmm. what's a text message? Um, and now like I just realized how much less atten like less attention to detail 
the kids get because I think they spend so much time they fall asleep on their phone and and I've actually like challenged my students I'm like take one hour away from being on your phone today and take that time as you go to bed to like think about your dances you've learned or your choreography or whatever it is and see if it helps you and my students walked in this particular studio the next week and they're like wow that really made a difference I'm like wow. yeah because you're one not fall, like you're not falling asleep looking at what Susie Q's doing on Instagram or what whoever's eating or posting like just don't stay on your phone all the time so it has been different seeing that like it's like they're not all there sometimes and I don't really I've I refuse to change my teaching method I just really believe in holding really anyone in my life accountable but especially my students I'm like you're capable of doing this. You just have to make the decisions to like prioritize everything. And so, yeah, but it is different than when I grew up for sure. I mean, when you say that they're not all there, what does that mean? I feel like they are so caught up in like everything that's happening online and look and like people that they don't know, like in reality shows of families that, I'm like, you spend hours watching about this family that you don't know. And to me, like, it just doesn't really make sense to do that. Why right. don't you just, like, be more proactive and go do something to better yourself? But Right. Well, what would you say to, to people that would say that, you know, there was TV. We had TV when we were growing up, and I did watch a lot of TV. Oh, yeah, I love Saved by the Bell. <clears throat> so, I mean, but what's the difference between TV and, and the Internet? Attention-wise. Um... I mean, now you can watch TV on your phone, but I just think kids get caught up in like the whole Instagram world. And I guess, uh, okay. what is it, TikTok? That's now the new yeah, age. I don't know. I don't. I don't do either. you have a TikTok? No, I don't. I mean, we got to get TikTok. <laughs> we could do a dance. That's what we do. We could launch our TikTok. Never mind. Yeah, do a dance. I mean, you're the perfect person. She's the perfect person to launch a TikTok with. We can, we can do the woe and the dab. Yes. Yes. Exactly. So yeah, so kids are on TikTok now. Is that like a thing? It's like a big yeah. Thing? One of my students in Alabama, I guess, is TikTok famous. That's what I was told. TikTok famous. Yeah, I don't, I don't really. I mean, we got to figure this out. I mean, I, I don't want to be this old dude that does not know what's going on. You know, I, and I have no idea. I don't even know what TikTok is. I, I'm actually, I shouldn't say that. I've heard that it's like a, a certain amount of time and people do dances choreographed. Yeah. We're with one of the best choreographers in the United States right now. This is serendipitous. <laughs> so uh, we could be the omnipotent dancers, <laughs> on, on, omnipotent, omnipotent dancers. <laughs> JP, can you look up how you're supposed to say, how do we say? Uh, I think you're doing it right. Uh, omnipotent. Omnipotent. It sounds right. Yeah, it does. I think you're hitting it. I think you're hitting it. Yeah. <laughs> Sweet. Oh my God. Who is that? What was her name? <laughs> that was a sassy little she sounded, voice. She sounded very beautiful. <laughs> Omnipotent. Wow. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Stop. That's so funny. <laughs> Can't handle it. Okay. So that's how you say it. Omnipotent. You know, I think in the future, JP, I think you need a mic and just, we can randomly throw it off to you. Yeah. <laughs> dongle <laughs> yes yes I love it dongle dongle yeah we'll talk about that after but yeah that, that could be cool um, but so what were we talking about oh we have the omnipotent uh, joy here <laughs> and um, she's going to teach us how to dance on TikTok no, so, so you, your, your students uh, are all on TikTok now and they are not in general you're saying that not necessarily your students I don't want to, like we're not calling them out as not being present but kids in general are not as present right. as they used to be right you're yeah. seeing that right now yeah yeah what is it like are they uh, are they not focused are you talking in their head somewhere else yes exactly yeah. like that's it. I always give an example I'm <clears throat> like if you put your arm up there's like one way to do it 
and you can like wave it or you can take it around a different direction. And for me, like when I learn my brain registers to learn it, just how someone does it. Mm -hmm. And what I notice is that they do it their own way, which also is probably just them trying to live their own life. But I always, I'm like, guys, even if you don't want to be a dancer, whatever you do in life, you're going to have to take direction from someone. And it may not always be your decision sure. of how you're doing it. And that's the biggest thing because usually in like a room full of dancers, like if I teach on convention and there's 300 dancers, there's probably two to three of them that will actually enter the like professional career. Mm -hmm. And that's fine, but you learn so much through it, like their discipline and stuff. And doesn't matter what you do, you're going to have to follow somebody's rules. Right. You don't get to just do everything you want. <clears throat> and so, yeah, I mean, good luck to this generation. Yeah. I mean, well, what's interesting to me that, or what's like, it's, it's a little concerning, but I think that we'll figure out a way around it is that that's why I was asking, are they like fading out? Because if they're stuck in internet world, and that's kind of what's happening right now, right? We're, we're getting ready to merge with machines. Like it's, it's coming. Like we're probably five to seven years away. I mean, the chips are going to be going in, you know, they're already going in. But, um, you know, so will there, you know, what I think that we're seeing is somehow kids actually being, not present there. I actually don't think that they're present. I actually think that they're somehow connected to that device. And it's, it's a, a different, I don't, maybe we don't know the exact dimension, but I think that they're, they're somewhere else. Their consciousness is somewhere else. Well, yeah. And even, and I think, and I mean, I can imagine because I don't have children, but you know, the like iPads and like all the different things. And it's easier for parents to like, just give that to them and they kind of are distracted by it. I mean, my nieces are like that and you forget like kids now for me, if I go to dinner with someone, I try to make the conscious decision to like put my phone down mm -hmm. and not be on it unless like if there's something going on work wise or whatever, but kids can't just sit there and have a conversation. They just do it on their phones. I know. There's a cat staring at you right now. Oh, it's a great cat speak. <laughs> I mean, this is this is awesome. As this is my omnipotent cat, the great cat speak. You can let the great cats be in. I mean, he's uh he's just chilling. Hey buddy, come on. <laughs> come on. There he goes. You're doing all right. I know. He doesn't know how to handle this room. Like the room has changed. Oh. Sorry, buddy. Yeah. I mean, you just back out there. We'll see you later, Catsby. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't know how to handle the room. Um, but my omnipotent cat, it's a great cat speak. But uh, yeah, so I mean, the whole dancing to workout thing, yeah, I think a lot of workouts are finding something that you love to do and then doing it. That's how you can really stay in shape. For me, like you love to dance. That's easy. <clears throat> I love to fight. And, you know, it's just finding the time Right. To do that. For me, lifting weights, it's like pulling teeth. Oh, yeah. No, when oh. I was in college, I tried to be cool. Like, spring break, everyone went to the, like, rec center, and I was, like, on a treadmill, and I was like, screw this. I'm not doing that anymore. It's not me. Right. Yeah, when I lift, I mean, yeah, it's, it's just, it's like pulling teeth. So, um, you know, even, even the workouts that I did when I was training fighters was <clears throat> for, for strength and conditioning. It wasn't a lot of heavy lifting. It was more circuit training. So we'd have circuits set up and you know, you get ripped, you know, flipping tires and doing explosive exercises, but it's not boring and it's timed and you're trying to beat your time and that I enjoy. Now, you know, I go to, a, I'm traveling, I go to a gym. The, the, the trainer that I had was a professional fighter. He's like the only guy I can really train with. Um, but now it's just, uh, he's, he's not uh, on the road anymore. He got in a relationship and uh, you know, the wife made him stay home. I get it. But, you know, the uh, not having that, um, it's really difficult right. for me to work out. First world problems. These are definitely first world problems. I don't have the right person to work out with me. <laughs> like, seriously. <laughs> what are we talking about? Uh, aliens and then uh, 
not having the right person. And getting y'all into dance class. Oh, and, and we're going to get, get into the dance class. <clears throat> yeah, so you were talking about kids being a little disconnected, but what, what positive right now do you see in the, in the youth that are coming up doing the dance? Um, I think the cool thing is, like, especially with uh, Millennium being here, we have, like, open classes. So I think, and that means, like, every age, the younger kids <clears throat> being around, like, older kids, and then my friends that are not, like, necessarily, quote, dancers coming to class, I think being involved in a atmosphere that you're learning. I learn from like my eight year old students. Like I have this one student Haven that um, she was like in John Gurney's music video. Huh. I can't remember which one, but she's just this little bundle of energy and she kind of reminds you like <clears throat> that lighter area of life. And uh, I do see people being more open-minded and coming to like, terms with like realizing things and listening more and even though I say there's a disconnect I think they're also open to listening to things mm -hmm. I think the social media world has been like kind of caused like a lack of train of thought but also given it kind of a boost of it sure so it's like a happy medium but um yeah I mean there's some positivity there sure there's there's some positivity there's, there's there always is and every generation from what i've heard like talks i won't say bad about the other because i don't think we're necessarily talking bad we're just, just possibly seeing a problem that might need to be talked about and fixed <laughs> but right. i mean every generation says oh the, the one before is going on yeah they're, they're bad but <clears throat> um but they're also really talented and smart like mm -hmm. i always say i'm glad i grew up when i did because these kids I teach now, I'm like, you are so crazy talented. I mean, like Los Angeles now, like kids are moving out there when they're 14 years old mm -hmm. and already starting to have professional careers. Sure. So, you know, there's ups and downs to everything. And I get what you're saying with like the weird, like, oh, how are they going to make it? But they, they will. I mean, as long as they have people that are still teaching them sure good things yeah and you know uh, other part of the internet they're probably going on youtube and watching all these dance moves constantly i've had several students that will <clears throat> post a video that they learned like a dance i posted online yeah. and they learned it from the video there you go so they can practice at home right if they get, become obsessive they're just like stuck to that i mean because you know for me uh growing up doing martial arts i would get instructional videos so I'd get these videos and I would learn how to do an arm bar. And, you know, now everything's online. I don't have to wait for these VHS tapes, you know, to come in. Not even DVDs. I had VHS. Actually, before that, it was like eight tracks. I don't have to wait for my eight tracks to come in. Yep. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I mean, it's, 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 it's changed uh, a lot. Now you have instant information. So if they want to learn how to dance, they can go and, and catch a video and then go to a class tighten up a little more I yep. mean yeah I mean because imagine all these kids in small towns you know Nashville's probably got a, a decent dance scene your your studio probably oh yeah is. there's so many studios here but I was from a small town so I had to like travel to get it but that's the thing like instant gratification <clears throat> that's what people are used to with the internet but that's what they have to learn with learning like you don't get that instantly sure. so that's like a good like kind of scenario of thinking because they can access it but it doesn't mean that they, they can achieve it. it right away. yeah sure i mean that's how it was with with training fighters it's like uh you know i had a buddy mike Pyle, who learned you know a large amount off of videos and then he just polished it all up he's one of the best fighters I ever trained my god at first time i trained this kid, speaking of this kid mike Pyle, i say kid he was older than me but i was pretty young when i when i started professionally and uh he came in my gym and people always say so mixed martial arts i'm not sure how much it is like dance but especially like brazilian jiu-jitsu like you can tell who's good and who's not good by training them yeah like if, if i'm rolling with somebody like if they're not good i'm submitting them like you can't hide like there's no way i'm tapping you out over and over and over again it's like man domination like you know it you know what's up this is my technique you don't have any technique my my technique versus your technique i'm beating you etc so Mike Pyle walked in to my gym and this is a guy that did mostly learn off of, of videos and 
I was like, oh, he's supposed to be good, whatever. You know, you hear that all the time. Probably like you hear a dancer's supposed to be good, and you're like, eh, okay, <laughs> you know, all right? And uh, get on the mat, I caught him in a Kimura, which is a specific arm lock, really quick, maybe 15 seconds into our first roll. I'm like, hmm, not that good. Caught him in another Kimura 30 seconds later. I'm like, this guy is not that good. He's like, hold on a second, man, hold on. That says the accent. Hold on a second. So he's like, let me take my earrings off. I didn't realize he hadn't taken his earrings out. So I kind of caught him early in the, in the training. So I was 20, 20 or 21 years old here. And then he took off his earrings. And he went on to beat me ruthlessly. I mean, I'm talking about, he tapped me out. I don't even know how many times. Just brutalized me. And... This is a guy that learned mostly off of videos. I had great trainers up to that point, mostly off of videos. Um, and I went in the back of my own gym and I just cried. I cried for about 15 minutes. I couldn't handle getting beat like that. Like, <gasps> you know, <laughs> another man could do that to me. Like, but he did. Um, and so I say that because you got somebody that learned a lot off of VHS tapes. Yeah. My technique my technique was better to a point, but he was just so gifted with it. Then we polished up a lot of his stuff, um, and he, he went on to be a you know world class fighter in the UFC. But um, he he ended up going to he moved to Denmark, trained Thai boxing out there. Then he moved to Las Vegas, and he was one of the main guys at Randy Couture's gym. But um, you know, so I think you can learn, and then you get you know you can polish it up. So some of these kids that are super talented, you know, they could probably watch a dance video and learn like an instructional video and get to a certain level and then you know at the highest level then they got to get somebody to polish them up yeah and i think some some people just have a natural thing at a little girl come in my class last week and i was like oh where do you dance you know weekly like what studio and she's like this is my first dance class and i was like what and it's a small world it turns out to be like someone that someone's child that works for a record label for a lot of artists I've worked with and they messaged me and they were like you have no idea like she was like I just want to go try a dance class and has so much natural talent and you see that a lot there are some people like and especially with like males they'll come start <clears throat> dancing later in life and just have a natural ability to it I'm sitting here I'm like I've been doing this since I was three years old right but um but yeah I think it's just some people have that natural like knack for things so, so somebody like coming up in the dance world, like what would you uh, really suggest or, or recommend to them? What words of advice would you give to them? If you don't absolutely love it, don't do it first off. Mm -hmm. And um, to train in every area and also don't just close your mind to like just dance, like learn everything. Like I've always, when I'm on set, like I talk to all the PAs and like the producers, directors, everyone, because I want to learn everything because the more knowledge you have about anything you're working on, because dancers, like they're just a small portion of things when you're talking about the professional industry, whether it's a award show, TV, film, like you're just your background. And so learn everything. So then when you're put in a position to do more, like you have more options, um, and then just like be nice and be a good person. <laughs> yeah, be nice and be a good person. Yeah. Oh man. Well, Joy, thank you so much. I won't make another Joy pun. I was like, hey. and <laughs> thank you so much. You, you knew that I was thinking about it. Yes. Okay. Well, I'm not <laughs> stupid. <laughs> well, maybe, no, maybe no, I no, am. No, you're far from that. But um, no, thank you very much. I really appreciate you coming on such short notice. And um, kind of getting to know you and hang out. It was a lot of fun. You're, you're a lot of fun. So Ed Clay with Joy Denver Spears on the Big Ed Podcast. <laughs>